So I have to be honest, I really hate politics. Not my cup of tea, not anything that I'm interested in. Having been a PA now for about six years, and the more I talk to people and read, the more I realize that it is something that is important that we have to pay attention to and be involved with. That's the unfortunate side. The fortunate side is that there are lots of PAs out there who are very active politically for the PA profession and who really love it. And today I'm going to talk to one of those people. Hi, I'm Dr. Brooke Schweitzer. I'm a physician assistant. I've practiced in a whole host of capacities and I'm currently in an administrative role as director of advanced practice for a large health system. In addition to my day-to-day work, I'm very involved with the legislative aspects for our profession. At the state level, I'm involved on the legislative affairs committee. I'm also a trustee for our state political action committee. On the national level, I donate to the political action committee for the AAPA and I'm involved within our profession as an elected voting delegate for the House of Delegates for AAPA. Hi, Brooke. Thanks for joining us today. Hi, Michelle. Thanks for having me. I'm passionate about this topic and happy to (laughs) share that passion. Did you cringe a little bit when I talked about how much I hate politics? (laughs) No, but I think that that you're representative of the majority of PAs who, um, you know, they're already tasked with a lot for their clinical careers. And this is just something that's almost like a burden on top of that if you don't know about it. Let's talk a little bit about the, the state of the profession. And what do you think are some of the biggest challenges facing the PA profession right now? I think one of the biggest challenges is branding, just getting our name out there for people to understand what is a PA, how can they be utilized? We are not just doctor helpers, that we can provide a lot of value in many sectors of care. And I also think our name, Physician Assistant, while it was the beginning of our organization, it's a bit of a misnomer now that, you know, we help patients on a much broader scale. So why is it that you think it's important for PAs to be involved in the political process when it comes to our profession? I think it's important for PAs in all areas and all states to be knowledgeable about the laws that govern their practice. At the end of the day, it's the laws that say what we can or cannot do. And being involved in this process process has kind of two distinct functions. The first one is kind of what I like to call offense, kind of advancing our profession, trying to figure out how we can break down some barriers to utilize our profession better, like being able to sign for durable medical equipment or for diabetic shoes or to provide care for the underserved. There's a whole host of laws that govern the way that we practice. And so trying to advance that is offense. But the other reason why we have to be involved in the political process is defense. And unfortunately, that takes the center stage, many legislative sessions. Other professions are also trying to advance their agendas. And sometimes that doesn't align with what PAs do or say. For example, if somebody brought a law that said PAs cannot read x-rays, that would certainly change our practice. And so we have to be cognizant about what laws are being proposed, how we can be involved in them for our profession, but also to make sure that they're not limiting our ability to take care of patients in all areas. It's not fun or easy reading to go through that stuff. And so I just kind of think it'll take care of itself. I'm just doing my job. I'm doing what I'm supposed to. That's all I need to be doing. But like that example, if something like that were to happen, then my whole scope of practice could be changed and I would have no say in it. It's so cumbersome to be knowledgeable and you can, you can read through it and still not understand it. Which is why we have political action committee PACs, Mm -hmm. right? That's what PAC stands for. Does every state have one of those? I don't know. I think some of the smaller states may not, but all the big states certainly do. And so the political action committee, are they the ones that are writing or putting these bills forward? And are they Are they also the ones that are watching for legislation that may harm the profession? Yes. In Texas, we have two kind of distinct groups. We have a legislative affairs group that's part of our state organization. And we also hire a lobbyist to kind of help us navigate and create some of those relationships that maybe we couldn't have had on our own. And then there's also the political action committee. And so I'm involved in kind of both sides. The legislative affairs group is the ones that decides what's our agenda, what bills do we want to propose, what legislators or lawmakers do we need to talk to to support our bill? And then the political action committee side is the one that gets donations uh, for our political action committee. And then we decide how to strategically disperse those funds to those legislators that are going to support our bills to get them across the finish line. See, that's so disheartening uh, because to me, it sounds like we're, we're basically buying 
votes from legislators. Am I misinterpreting that or is that how politics works? Nope. That's, <laughs> that's how money makes the world, or the world go round. And that same is true in Texas. Um, and I think that that's just changing a lot over time. It's very expensive to run a campaign. And so donating to their campaign is one way to kind of get your name on the top of the list. But even more important is making a personal connection. Right. Ultimately, these legislators are not PAs. They, they may not understand medicine at all. They don't know what it's like to practice. And so it's our responsibility to teach them. Why is it important? Why do we need this bill? And how can we have you successfully lobby for us among your colleagues to get this bill past the line? And so we have to count on them to represent us as we're not able to propose those bills ourselves. So that's why it's important for PAs to contribute to PACs, right? Because we have to have that money to be able to have our voices heard. Yep. Unfortunately, money is influence and that's the name of the game in all kind of political realms. And so it does take money to advance our bills. We also have to pay our lobbyist who is very valuable to us advancing our agenda. Physicians and nurses also have their own political action committees, which are much bigger and have deeper pockets than, than we do. So it's even more important for us to get involved. I see it listed like when you pay your your to your state organization or to the national the AAPA, there's the, the dues and then there's where you can contribute to a PAC. Why is that separate? And is, is our money that we pay for the dues, is any of that going towards legislative efforts? Nope, they are 100% um, distinct and different. And that's because there are multiple laws that govern how political action committees can count their money and how they can spend it. Your dues are not going into any of the political work. That's solely the political action committee. Because I think, you know, there's probably people like me that when I pay the dues, I'm kind of like, nope, no, nothing else going to the pack because my dues are not <laughs> enough Expensive and enough. they can just use it from that. And I don't think a lot <laughs> of people realize that it, it by law can't be used for the legislation piece. So any legislative, any money that's going to go to those packs has to become from those separate donations. If we want our profession to not only survive, but to thrive and to grow and to change and to get those things that we want to have, then we have to spend the money. It doesn't have to be much, but if everybody contributes a little bit, it would be a game changer. Like you said, the nurses and the, the doctors, their organizations are much larger than ours. And they also have a culture, especially the nurses have this culture of being heavily involved in being politically active and putting their profession forward. And I think PAs need to have some more of that. We need to learn from them. They've been very effective. And, uh, I think that we need to create a culture of getting all of our frontline PAs involved. What are some, some specific things that PAs can do to just become involved or help uh, with this whole process? If you can't give money, there's a multitude of other ways to get involved. You can get involved with your state organization by joining one of these committees like the Legislative Affairs or the Political Action Committee to help send the money in the correct places and to make those decisions about what our priorities are. That's on the state level. On the national level, they also have a Political Action Committee for PAs. Anything that's involved in Medicare or Medicaid is done on a national level, and that's what our national organization, AAPA, aids in us lobbying for. You can also just understand what's going on so that you can be singing the song to all the people in your area. You can get to know your local legislature and you can tell them why each bill is important or why it's important to prioritize certain bills. Ultimately, it comes up to the relationships with those lawmakers. And so that's one of the most powerful things that you can do is just schedule a meeting, send an email, get to know your legislator and tell them what a PA is and why our bills are important. Whenever I hear that, like, you know, call your legislator, or send an email. And even if they provide their, their name and their phone number, I'm still like, what? I don't know. How, I, I'm not going to contact these very busy people and they don't know who I am. I'm just going to send them a random email. Is it that direct? Do you just call and say, hey, I'm a, a PA. I'm, I'm concerned about this aspect. 
or I'm in support of this bill and I just want my voice to be heard. I mean, is that literally what people are doing? Yeah. And I think that every, you know, little email or letter matters. Ultimately, their staff are probably the ones that are reading through all of these, but if they get a hundred emails saying PAs need to be able to read chest x-rays and this bill will take that ability away from us, then that'll come to the top of the priority list. We do not want to decrease access to care. We want to increase access to care. And so it really just kind of puts a spotlight on our bills. And then having that relationship with lawmakers is important. Maybe they didn't realize that there was a bill up for us to not be able to read chest x-rays, for example. And maybe they went into their, you know, local primary care office and you were working, taking care of them and say, hey, great. Yeah, here's your chest x-ray. It's clear. But I want you to know that, you know, there's this bill that might limit us to do that. So I'm glad you're here today. Glad we could take care of you. But I want to bring this to your attention. And those personal relationships are the most meaningful. What is the time commitment if somebody wants to be on a political action committee? So it is really not that much. It's what you really, it's what you put into it. There's a few meetings at our state conferences two times per year. And then we also have Zoom meetings a few times per year. And we keep in touch on a software app called Basecamp, where we're constantly talking back and forth to each other, to the other trustees on the political action committee, and also in communications with our lobbyists about what's coming down the docket and how we can most efficiently use our funds. And is there anything else that you want to say about the importance of political action for the PA profession? Yeah, get involved. It's important for us to know how the sausage is made, um, how a bill becomes a law. There's a lot of steps. It takes a lot of time, but ultimately it's going to benefit us all and it's going to benefit our patients. All right, Brooke, I think you've convinced me. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I still hate politics but I do see the importance of being involved. All of us have put in so much time, money, and effort into becoming a PA that it would be ridiculous not to put in any kind of time or money to help the profession survive and to thrive. If we want to see change, if we want things to be different, that has to happen through legislation. And the only way that that can happen is for PAs to be involved either personally or supporting those working with the legislators to get those bills passed. So I'd like to ask for your support in another way, a more personal way. I'm trying to grow this channel and it really does help the YouTube algorithm when people like the videos, comment and subscribe. 